Hello, lovely humans! Jen Foxbot here. In this episode of Math Mondays, we are continuing our exploration of how electricity affects matter. Ooh! In the last episode, we looked at a term called atomic polarizability, which is how much a specific element will react or move to an external electric field. And in this episode, we're going to actually calculate how much the nucleus of an atom will move in the presence of a defined electric field. So we're going to do something that physicists don't always do. We're going to add numbers to our problems and we'll then make a comparison to our own bodies so we can better understand how much um, that atom actually moves from its perspective. It's all relative, right? And after that, we're going to look at how much energy it would take to ionize the atom or completely strip away the electrons from the nucleus of a hydrogen atom. <gasps> so fun! Okay, and along the way, we're gonna learn about voltage. Yay! All right, so here we go. I'm gonna grab my book and read the example problem so we understand verbatim what we're gonna do. Okay, a hydrogen atom with the Bohr radius of half an angstrom is situated between two metal plates one millimeter apart, which are connected to opposite terminals of a 500 volt battery. What fraction of the atomic radius does the separation distance D, basically how much the nucleus moves, amount to roughly? And then estimate the voltage you would need within this apparatus to ionize the element. And then there's a little note that we can use the value of alpha that's given, or sorry, the atomic polarizability that's given in the table here. Okay, so let's first record the information that was given to us in our problem. So uh, we know that our atom has a Bohr radius of R, where R equals half an angstrom, 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 10 meters. Uh, we know that this voltage here, uh, if we assume that this can be 0 volts, uh, we'll say that uh, this is 500 volts. Um, and then we know that the separation distance L is one millimeter or one times 10 to the negative third meters. And we are also given um, that alpha equals 0 0.667 times 10 to the negative 30th times four pi epsilon naught. Ooh, that got really small. That's an epsilon naught. And epsilon naught equals 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12, let me check that, let me check that, yeah, coulomb squared divided by newton meter squared. Okay, cool, so we actually have all the pieces of our equation that we need, or all the pieces of information that we need for our equations. Okay, so I'm going to make that a little smaller. Um, okay, so uh, we're going to use the um, atomic uh, dipole momentum or um, P, um, and so we know that uh, for an atom, this equals alpha times the applied external electric field. And we also know that for equal and opposite charges, so this is positive Q, this is negative Q. Oh, I guess I should specify. So we're gonna assume that the nucleus moves a distance D here, uh, D. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, and we also know that for equal and opposite charges, the dipole momentum is equal to um, uh, Q times the separation distance. So in this case, that's going to be QD. And since we have um, the magnitude of our nucleus and of the electron cloud, plus Q and minus Q, it equals the charge of an electron. So I'm just going to use E, tiny E, little e. And so then we just set these equal to each other and solve for D. So we're going to get um, the separation distance D equals alpha times the electric field divided by, hold on, hold on, hold on, divided by the charge of the electron. Okay, and in this case, we're not actually given the electric field, but we know that this is, well, 
a parallel plate capacitor, two plates that are separated by a distance uh, with charge on them is a parallel plate capacitor. And um, the voltage of a parallel plate capacitor is given by, um, let me make sure I don't write this, yeah, backwards. Um, the electric field times the separation distance here. And so we solve for the electric field, V divided by L, and then we plug that back in here. So we're going to get alpha um, times V over the charge of the electron times the separation distance L. Okay, and now we really just are plugging in numbers. And so what we're going to get is um, we're going to replace alpha with 0 0.667 times 10 to the negative 30th times 4 pi epsilon naught times the voltage of our capacitor, which is 500 volts, divided by the charge of an electron, 1.9 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs, uh, times the separation distance, which is 1 times 10 to the negative third meters. <gasps> Numbers, not just symbols. Okay, and I already calculated this, but we're going to run through it again. Um, so get out your handy dandy calculators and do it with me. Zero point, uh, whoopsies, 0.667 e to the negative 30th times 4 times pi times 8.85 e to the negative 12th for epsilon naught times 500 volts. And then I divide that by 1.9 e to the negative 19th times 1 e to the negative third. My calculator E stands for um, 10 to the third. Um, da, 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 da. Did something not work right? I think so. What did I miss here? 4 times pi. Oops. Oh, foo. I missed the 8.85. Okay, so we're going to do, my calculator can do, it's kind of like Okay, hold on, I have to insert, I have to insert because I missed a number. It's like a live demo. And you're like, okay, I'm gonna record the video of the demo because something's gonna go wrong here. <gasps> ah, I forgot how to insert. Oh, so sad. I guess I can just type it all over again. Well, I don't have to type the whole thing. Okay, hold on, eight. That's wild that I forgot how to do the insert. Nope, okay, that didn't work. Okay, 8.85 e to the negative 12 um, times 500. Okay, 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 okay. Uh, enter. Oh, damn it, error in syntax. That's dumb. Okay. How do I delete? Wow, boy, I really have forgotten how to use this shenanigans. I've gotten used to the calculator on the computer. AKA coding. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. Well, hopefully you trust me at this point. Um, and what you get is 2.32 calculator mistakes aside times 10 to the negative, whoops, 16th meters. Okay. That's real small, like real small. But we need to find the ratio of this distance uh, that the nucleus has moved to the radius of the atom. And so what we do is we do what is d over the radius of the atom. So 2.32 times 10 to the negative 16 meters divided by uh, 0 0.5 times 10 to the negative 10th meters. And what you get is four, I'm gonna bail on the calculator for now. It did me good while I was not on film. Uh, times 10, oh, that's a 10, not a six. Times 10 to the negative six meters. What? That's really small. That's a very, 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 very small ratio. So yes, this distance is extremely small, but also atoms are real tiny real tiny. And so what's cool about looking for ratios, hey, is that we're like, wait a second, this is, this is like a mil or four million times smaller than the radius of 
um, the atom. And so basically, if we think about it from the atom's perspective, it doesn't really move that much. Because if I were to grow one millionth of my height, I would grow a distance that's smaller than the thickness of one of my hairs. So I wouldn't really notice. And to be honest, that probably happens on a regular basis because the gravity pulls us down and the weight of the air like compresses us. And so in the morning, we're slightly taller than in the evening. And so honestly, I probably do grow more than this ratio in a given day. Wild, right? So that's really cool. So in the presence of a fairly large external electric field, the atom doesn't really move that much. It moves. It's a not zero number, but not that much. Okay, cool. So I'm gonna, no, let's keep going. Okay, we're at 11 minutes. If you're, if you're in, you're in. We're gonna cruise on through. Okay, so how much energy would we need to ionize the atom? That is going to be our next goal. Okay, so uh, we're gonna save this. We're gonna erase this. And we're gonna write up here D equals 2.32 times 10 to the negative 16th meters. Da, 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 da. Okay, and so now what we need is to calculate uh, the voltage. And so we're gonna use the same equation. D equals alpha times the voltage divided by the charge of the electron times the separation distance between the two. Wow, my E's and my L's look very similar. And so then we're gonna get uh, the voltage equals the um, distance that the nucleus moves times the charge of the electron times the separation distance. Oh, D, oh, that's cute. I wrote shorthand for delete, divided by alpha. Um, and so what you end up getting when you plug in the numbers, um, oh, I guess I should say, so the ionization um, of the atom is going to happen when, I guess I didn't really need to save that. Um, so it's, the atom is going to ionize when the nucleus moves all the way over here, because by then um, the electron cloud will be, well, um, like this, and well, okay, yeah. I was like, wait a second, that drawing doesn't seem to work. Um, but basically, if if the nucleus surpasses the, the radius of the electron cloud, then they have effectively separated. The nucleus is outside of the electron cloud because it has moved so much. And so in that case, um, it will ionize when the separation distance equals the radius of the atom. So instead of this number, you actually plug in um, the radius of the atom. So, sorry, my little word got changed to rel. Maybe it stands for reality, I don't know. Um, and what you end up getting when you plug in the numbers, uh, I trust that you know how to use a calculator probably better than I do at this point. Um, you get a voltage of 1.09 times 10 to the eighth volts or 109 mega volts or million volts. Mega, because we like to be lazy. Technically, that's the term. That is a huge number. That is a very, very, very high voltage. Um, for context, in our homes, we have coming out of the wall 120 or 240 uh, volts for large appliances. Um, in long stretches of our electrical grid wires, you might find voltages around 34 kilovolts um, or 34,000 volts. In the lab that I worked in, we worked with 60,000 kilovolts. That was really intense. Uh, you have to be really careful because arcing, uh, basically tiny, tiny lightning, <laughs> um, is very likely with 60,000 kilovolts. Um, and the highest pr voltage produced in a lab um, was at Oak Ridge National Lab, which generated uh, 25 or between 25 and 30 megavolts. Um, so 109 megavolts is huge, but this does happen. Lightning. And actually, as I was doing research for this, someone made a really interesting point that 
um, nuclear weapons generate enough energy to ionize atoms. So, oh, not as much fun as lightning. I guess lightning's also not extremely fun. Um, but to put this in context, these are the types of um, voltages that uh, lightning um, is generated under, which is why it's able to ionize air. So wild, right? Um, yeah. Okay, so I find this stuff fascinating. I hope that this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions about the problem that we covered here or the content that we dabbled in. Um, and yes, we will continue our exploration of electrodynamics, but we're getting close to wrapping it up. So let me know if there is a burning topic in electrodynamics that you really want me to cover, because otherwise I'm gonna peruse through the book and find things that I like. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much for watching and we will see you next time. Bye friends.